My dear respected brothers and sisters, uh, early September is a time of transition uh, for every family, for young people of different ages as they go back to school, college and university. And families, parents in particular, of course, prepare for that and prepare them for that. This transition is preceded by um, many, many years of thought and reflection on the part of parents when, in, when they think about their children's future. W what is my son or daughter going to do? What is he or she going to become? What opportunities am I going to give him or her? And usually the, that transition from one year to the next, from, from primary school to secondary school, secondary school to sixth form, sixth form to university, is often more often than not informed by all of those years of thinking. I've spoken in a series of um, khutbahs uh, over the summer about Islamic education and the milestones, uh, milestones of, of Islamic education and how it has to be prioritized when we do this. But the reality is that our children's secular education is also important. We know it's important, we give it importance and we guide them through it and we try to achieve success. So, are there any Islamic guide guidelines with regards to something that consumes so much of their time and their life, so much of their attention, so much of their mental, uh, physical and emotional energy? So, the most important thing to address here is that generally when we address the question of school, college, university education. It's become quite habitual and normal in the Muslim community to address it through the binary of Islamic education versus secular education. It's a compartmentalized, separate world. So today, I want us to consider the fact that this binary is not, it's, it's, it doesn't have to exist. Right? This binary does not have to exist. Setting aside those situations, and this is important, of, of course, setting aside those situations when people, when parents are preparing young people uh, and putting them through school, college, university, and young people are going through school, college, and university, but either their choice of career is one that is haram. And when I say haram, I mean, you know, I'm going to take all of the differences of opinion, different opinions of ulama on board and say haram, things that are haram universally, meaning that, you know, everybody knows that it's haram. It is categorically haram. Um, you know, there's always an element of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, lack of sharia compliance, right, in many different career paths. But for the most part, the majority of them are permissible, in and of themselves permissible. But some, you know, are not, right? People who seek careers in, um, in, 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 in music, in, 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 in acting, drama, people who seek careers in at least a, a, a sizable part of the very, you know, the very methodology in, employed in things like art, um, you know, is, is problematic. Even if you take the most lenient view about the principle of art, which for, the, for most scholars is itself, especially if it involves living creatures, is haram. Similarly, careers that involve directly dealing in and benefiting from um, interest, right? That directly involve uh, buying and selling and, and dealing and benefiting from any haram product. Okay, so of course you know, and, and then it, this this is this is a consideration always: is the career choice one that is permissible, uh, and is it not? So setting that question aside, and setting aside a situation where a person is pursuing a career with an intention that is wholly un-Islamic, with an intention that is wholly un-Islamic, you know. Whatever, whatever example that may be, there, there, it may well be that 
their their intention is that this is going to take me this is going to uh, enable me to um to do uh to do x y and z and with that i want to do X, y haram thing that mean their overall the end goal is something that is haram right or there is something in their intention that is haram they want to move away from their family they want to move away from their family because you know it's not it's that it's not it's not for them you know they're not family oriented um you don't have a choice when it comes to being family oriented silatul rahim is is an, is an is an obligation that is not a valid um intention and so on putting that aside any legitimate um area of learning can be seen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by us as an islamic area of learning and here the binary ends and that is if the choice of career is one that seeks to benefit people, that seeks to benefit society, that seeks to benefit the world, that seeks to alleviate a problem, a difficulty, that seeks to find um, solutions to problems, cures to diseases, and so on. Right? Solution-oriented um, pathways of learning, right? Or the intention is to, to get an MBA or study business because one has thought about this and recognizes that tijara is a great sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And one seeks to, to, to develop, to first embody and model and develop ethical ways, right, of, of business that stays away from the haram but also seeks to uh, be a model of how employees are taught and how money is spent and so on and so forth and there are so many ways in which a, a noble intention right can make a, 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 a neutral a neutral career path one that is islamic and the knowledge that you seek for that the degree you do at university for that becomes becomes legitimately seeking knowledge in islam because you are seeking it for the sake of islam you are seeking it for a noble intention that is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like that, many mundane things that, just like the, there are many mundane things that we do in our lives. And we think of them as worship because we have checked our intention and we have done them according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You know, what is more mundane than our sleep? Yes, of course, it's not mundane in the sense that you get rest, etc. Et but most of us think of it as just something you have to do. Right? It's mundane. It's not, it's not me working. It's not spending time with the family. It's not me doing leisure. It's none of those things. I'm just sleeping. Right? It's a completely passive activity. But the whole of it is ibadah. If done in the way advised by the Prophet ﷺ. You pray your Isha in the masjid, pray your Fajr in the masjid. You have ibadah. You get reward of ibadah the whole night. And then there is the reward that you get if you read your adhkar um, uh, before the night and, uh, and so on. And there are so many aspects of the sunnah of sleep that if a person embodies and practices something as passive and as mundane as that becomes ibadah well then why wouldn't something as active as enriched as powerful as life-changing um, as something that is powerful in terms of the way it impacts communities societies countries nations something that impacts the progress of humanity the decline of humanity your studies why would not that be why would that not be ibadah if it was done with the right intention. So this is something that parents have to coach their children towards, right? You're going to study medicine, let's talk about intention. Let's talk about how we're going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this. You're going to study pharmacy, let's talk about intention. Let's talk about how this pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's, let's talk about, if there, are there any considerations from a Sharia point of view? Let's ask the masjid, masjid to organize um, a talk about this and so on. Let's, you know, let's interrogate ourselves so that such a big part of our life can be aligned to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we no longer have to deal with this binary of Islamic education versus secular education. It is no longer secular. It is just as much part of, of your Islamic being, right? It is, it is a manifestation of, of you as a Muslim because like everything else, you do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to... To, in, in fulfillment of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and in conjunction with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is the most important thing for those of you who are going back to university. And it's the same for your jobs. All of I mean, if I, maybe, maybe there's only a small section of the congregation that is, uh, that is at university. But you're all at jobs. This principle applies in your jobs and in your careers. And if you've already started something and you never thought about it then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to look at when you fixed your intention. Allah is our generous Lord. You fix it now. You think about these things now. And for the rest of your lives, this is your, this is your ibadah. This is your, this is your enterprise, right? Your effort for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, as long as you find a noble intention and you try your best to stay true to it. So this is the first and probably the most important aspect of considering these important milestones in our lives and in the lives of um, our children. Of course, one of the sunnas of, of, of this is to always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for opportunities received. If that gratitude isn't there, then part of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and part of our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is missing. Because it is Allah who commands us to be grateful. And so when, when blessings are given to us, that gratitude is, starts us off on the platform of obedience to our, our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So gratitude is extremely, uh, is, is extremely important in this regard. It is not by our effort that, that I am a doctor. It is not by my effort that I am a alim. It is not by my effort that my children are on good, good career paths and have gone to good grammar school. But it is by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because for the, the circumstances that have put me in the situation, the majority of it I had no control over. It is entirely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that gratitude is extremely, uh, is extremely important. We have to motivate our children right, to have lofty ambitions. You want to be a doctor, be a great doctor. You want, you want, you want to pursue a career, start, you know, talk to them about, try, you try to understand, get them to understand, get them mentored so that they understand all of the different aspects of that career, where the areas of growth are, right? Where the opportunities of progression are and let them have, once their intention is secure, let them loose so that they can pursue it with high aspirations. Because successful Muslims isn't just for you. Your success doesn't just have to be for yourself. It doesn't just have to be for your big house and for your big car. Your success can be for the Ummah. Your success can be for the Ummah. And that is another thing that makes it a noble deed. Right? Make your success for the Ummah. How, how much money does it take to fulfill your needs? If you pursue success and you work hard for it, right? Within the early part of your career, the first 10 years of your career, your needs will be met. What after? Is it just one big extension after another? Another house? What after? And here, I will never say to people, turn away from your money, right? As some sort of move to try to move people away from materialism. People have to move away from materialism in their heart, they don't have to move away from their money. The Prophet ﷺ didn't tell Uthman radiallahu anhu, give up your money. He didn't tell, to say to Abu Bakr, give up your money. As in, he, he encouraged them to give in charity. He didn't tell them to stop earning. He didn't say, ah, oh, you're spending too much time earning money. What's all of this? This is preoccupying too much of your attention. Give it up. No. But their mind and their heart was centered on the Akhirah, centered on Allah's obedience, the, the Prophet Sallallahu obedience, the Prophet Sunnah. And then therefore, they were able to align their resources onto the same path. Money is just a resource. It's just a resource. And we need plenty of it. The Ummah needs plenty of it. Our communities need plenty of it. Our Masajid need plenty of it. And we need healthy amounts of it. There's nothing wrong with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yuhibbu an yara athara ni'mati ala abdi. People moderately spend on themselves and their families. This is legitimate and acknowledged by the Prophet sallallahu So success is a good thing. So help our children and you young people have high aspirations, even if it is in your career. And I encourage everybody to encourage their children to seek entrepreneurship in whatever they do. Put them on training programs to develop the entrepreneurial spirit. Make them people of ideas, people of creativity, so that they can, they can find better, more dynamic, more creative, more efficient ways to do their craft, to practice their craft. Whatever it may be, 
right? You, you, you know, there are, I, 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 have, I have limited bits of information about all the different careers I encounter, and I go and look into them a little bit. There are so many avenues of success. And sometimes, as Muslims, we don't pursue them because we're like, I'm in my comfort zone. Don't settle into a comfort zone, because if you settle into a comfort zone, that is evidence that all of your, your career and all of that is just for yourself. So it's like, I'm okay, I'm comfortable, that's enough. This is not the qana'ah that Allah wants from you. Allah wants for, for, for you to be personally happy with what you have, but he wants you to have high aspirations for the bigger picture. Right? For the bigger picture, for, for the ummah, for what you can do for the community. And sometimes, for the majority of people, all they can do, they might not be able to stand up here and give, a, give this sermon, but often all they can do is direct their resources to a goal. You are now helping people in Bangladesh. But the extent to which you can help them right now depends upon your resources. And that depends upon what your, what your aspirations were like before and what your capacity is based on those aspirations, what your capacity is now, brothers and sisters. So think about this now and coach your children to think about it from now. As they go into their careers, align things, align things to the bigger picture. Our bigger picture is the akhirah. We achieve that through success in the to spiritual success in the dunya which we achieve by obedience of Allah by obedience of the messenger of Allah by following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah in everything that we do that means we have to ask that question about everything what is what does Allah expect of me here now I'm going to university what does Allah expect of me so this is important when young people go to universities sometimes some of them are raised away from the deen, but they find deen in the university. And the secret is they go and they find good company. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders this as a general thing. Believers, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be with truthful people. Be with good people. Young people, when you go to university, college, seek out good friends. Their goodness is entirely based upon how connected they are to deen and the values of Islam and the way of Islam. And usually universities have Islamic societies and so on. You have to engage with them. Al-mar'u ala deeni khalili. You are your friends. If, in, if at university you find people who are secular-minded, liberal-minded, liberal minded, away from the deen, but they're wonderful people, that is who you are. And now you may be praying and going to, go, go, going to the masjid and so on, but eventually that will change. You will go on to the deen of your friend. This is why the famous saying that a man is on the religion of his friend. Right? So therefore let him see, let him, let him pay close attention to who he befriends or who she befriends. This is very, very uh, important. So these are some thoughts, inshallah ta'ala, about, about this important stage in the lives of young people and about any any milestone that we face in our lives and about our careers and about the big things that we do with our lives which takes up so much of our time this is very important today because traditionally brothers and sisters this is my last point people did not spend so much time on an activity to earn a livelihood they didn't need to and if they did it was it was very it was very connected Right? People did agriculture, people did traditional, people did traditional things of labor that were more connected with their lives and with their spirituality. We don't. We spend a disproportionate amount of time, an unhealthy amount of time, just pursuing our livelihoods. And now more than ever, it is important to align it so that we find spiritual succor, spiritual fulfillment in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and our intentions and our livelihoods, inshaAllah ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do, keep us aligned to, uh, to, to his intention and to his way of al-Islam.